Hey guys, welcome to part two of this mini series for the PubSub implementation. We're going to cover some ground today, so yeah, stay with us. Modular design involves creating independent functional units, that is, modules. This makes scaling the website easy as you have addable and removable components. We divide this specific markup into four modules. The first to add and remove publishers, another to display the publisher list, the third to add and remove subscribers, and the fourth to display the subscriber list. For every module of our markup, we create an immediately invoked function expression, or an ify. And for four modules, we create four ifies, or ifies, or... The structure of every module is the same. Here too we have four parts. Four is such a great number. We start with caching individual DOM elements or components that are used later. This is followed by binding of event handlers. And then we have the render function to actually change the DOM. And finally, the user defined functions specific to our application. We'll tackle all of these one step at a time, so no worries. I'll start by explaining these four parts with respect to the subscriber module. Custom. Towards the beginning of an ify, you store DOM elements used throughout the module in some local variables. There are many ways you can do this. For one, Give all elements some class name or ID and access each one of them with a huge list of jQuery selectors. Uh, yeah, there's a good reason you shouldn't do that. There's a whole lot going on behind the scenes when a jQuery selector is invoked. It's way slower than your document.get element by ID. A better approach is to access the highest level of the module with the selector and then use something like element.find or something to get the rest. In our case, subscriber list is the DOM element that is static and on the screen at all times, and will be adding and removing subscribers. Furthermore, variable names preceded by the dollar sign are DOM elements. The rest are just, well, not. They are either raw HTML or internal variables. Here in the beginning, subscribers array will have the list of subscribers, each of which has the name, topics, subscribed, and the notifications as discussed in the previous video. In this section, you see two ways of binding events. One using delegate and the other with the pubsubs on function. You may ask, well how do we know which one to use and when? And to you, I say, well, that's a very good question. Considering events, there are two entities, one of which triggers some action and the other on which the action is triggered. If both entities are present in the same module, then use the delegate function, otherwise use the pubsub. This is because pubsub will act as a mediator between the modules containing the two entities. In this case, it's the publisher and subscriber modules. The delegate function will trigger add topic when the button, which is the add topic button, is clicked. Both of these are present in the subscriber module, so we use the delegate function. The notify event is triggered by a publisher when he wants to publish a work. Sub add and sub remove events are triggered by another module, which simply adds and removes subscribers. Since these three events are triggered by other modules, we use the pubsubs on function. Again, this is done to ensure the modules are decoupled, so nothing major happens when we remove the subscriber module in case we want to for some strange reason. The render function. Of all the functions in a module, your render function is the only one that touches the DOM. All other functions may change things internally, but if you're making any visual change, then the last thing you will call will be your render function. The underscore is a convention that suggests this function is private. In other words, we can't call this method from outside this module with something like subscribers.underscore render. 
All we're doing here is just rendering Mustache by passing the template and the variables that Mustache uses to make sense of the stuff in double curly braces. We pass an object literal containing the subscriber's array. The children, like name, topics, and notifications are accessed from Mustache directly. Note that subscribers on the right denotes the subscriber's array, and the one on the left denotes the subscriber's variable in the Mustache template. Here's our different function! Now I'm going to explain every single function here. The get function accepts an index or nothing. If the index is given, the subscriber with the specified index is returned. If nothing, then all subscribers are returned. The add function adds a subscriber to the subscriber list, just specifying the name. The other properties like topics and notifications are added as they arrive. To give more context to the implementation, I extracted the subscriber names from the list of subscriber objects. Then I check if that name already exists with the index of function. It returns minus one if not found. So if it is not minus one, then the subscriber exists and we don't change anything. Otherwise, add the subscriber to the subscriber list. While explaining binding of events, I mentioned this function is invoked by the sub add event triggered by clicking the add button from another module. After adding it to the subscriber list, this new subscriber needs to be rendered on the screen. In other words, we need to touch the DOM. And what function do we call when we need to change the DOM? The render function! The remove function works in the same way. It removes the subscriber if present and re-renders the DOM. Otherwise, nothing happens. The notify function is to notify subscribers of a published work on topics to which they have subscribed. For every sub or subscriber object, we initialize the topics and notifications if empty. Recall that this empty scenario is possible as we only initialize the name while creating subscriber. If the subscriber follows the topic of this published work, then he will be notified. The notification is done by adding the published work to the subscriber's notification list and the entire process is repeated for every subscriber. Once all the subscribers have been notified about this new work, we need to render it on the screen. And how do we render stuff on the screen? The render function. Again. The add topic function, as you may recall from the bind events part of the video, is called when the subscribe button is clicked. And this is in the same module. This function will add the topic in the text box to the list of subscribed topics. In the code, the function takes the click event as the parameter. The selector for the event.target will return the DOM for the click subscribe button, and we can cache it in a local variable called current L. Notice it's preceded by a dollar symbol to signify that it is a DOM element. From the next few lines, notice that I need to get some more elements, but I don't use the raw jQuery selectors to get the job done. Instead, I use closest and find to get the required elements. Dollar sub is the DOM for the subscriber class the button was a part of. Name is the corresponding subscriber's name. Topic is the new topic he wishes to subscribe, and that is typed in the text box. We dynamically cache these elements, as the subscribers themselves are dynamic elements. They don't just stay in the screen at all times. That's why we didn't cache them way up in the beginning with the subscriber list. Now, we just find the subscriber by name. If found, we check to see if the subscriber is already subscribed. If he is, then great, don't do anything. Otherwise, add the topic to the list of topics and re-render the screen with the render function. As for the remove topic function, I haven't used it anywhere yet. I just put a bare bones structure up. It should do the stuff similar to add topic. It ain't working yet, so don't worry about it too much. At the end of the iffy, we return an object which has the list of methods we want to expose. This has the name of the function on the right and the API call on the left. And this is the basics of a revealing module. Note that I've also exposed some functions which aren't really necessary. This is just to show a part of the revealing module pattern. And that's really all there is to the subscriber module. In the next videos, I will take a look at the publisher and the PubSub module. If you like what you saw, like, comment, and subscribe. You can get all the code on GitHub. It's in the description below. And I'll be seeing you guys in the next video.